what happened to you during the pandemic after we met inside the program? Like, give us a snapshot of like what your business was doing then. They couldn't air the episode of the show in Australia because like there, there's like actually tons of very scary spiders. Have, have, have you heard this? So you did set up your course on Evergreen. It is selling, so it's working, yeah? Welcome back to another episode of Before We Hit record where you get to hear all the cool, juicy, fun, intriguing conversations between me and an upcoming podcast guest before that guest expert episode releases. And today is pretty cool. If you remember, I started this whole segment because I'm all lonely here in Mexico where I live and I want to actually meet, not just record episodes with other interesting and successful online entrepreneurs. And we have somebody here named Ben, and I actually knew Ben from way back three-ish years ago when I coached him inside of one of Rick Mulready's programs uh, called, what was that called, Ben? Oh, I think it was called Offer. Offer to Optimize, was it? Yep, you got Offer it. Offer to That's... Optimize. And so if you're listening... What's going to happen here is you just get to hear Ben and I get to know each other and catch up in all the conversation that happens. Because you know what? Back in the day, back in my day, you know, we used to sit down with folks and get to know them before we ever did business with them. And Ben is the owner of Engage Video Marketing. He's a passionate online video strategist, video producer, international speaker. By the way, he just finished up speaking at Social media marketing world not virtually but standing physically in person on stage he's legit and what he does is he works with high impact brands worldwide to connect them with their ideal audiences through effective online video marketing and as the host of his own podcast called the engage video podcast and coach to hundreds of video strategists globally Here's Ben's mission. It's to help other creatives, marketers, and entrepreneurs and video producers better understand how to attract, engage, and convert audiences online with video. Shoot, Ben, sign me up. I feel like things have progressed so far, so much. It's been three years, and then I'm kind of perusing through Instagram looking for people to meet, and I see you are following somebody that I'm following, And I'm like, I know that guy. And then I see that you're speaking at Social Media Marketing World. No, maybe I wanted to attend Social Media Marketing World. And I saw you on their webpage. And I'm like, I know him. Oh, my gosh. This is the big. How how did that happen, by the way? How did you get on the Social Media Marketing World stage? Yeah. I mean, it's a cool story. So I actually first, this is my second time speaking at Social Media Marketing World in 2024. Um, I, I first spoke there in 2020 just before the world shut down, if you uh-huh. remember. I think you <laughs> oh, remember, remember what happened, right? Good story. I'll tell you in a <laughs> yeah, moment. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, my story prior to that, I mean, I've been um, kind of building building an audience and establishing myself as a video strategist um, for, for years, right? And that's what led me into to Rick's program and to meet you in the first place. Um, so, you know, my background prior to that and still today is is running a video strategy agency video production company here in in Queensland Australia but yeah long story short basically I uh, attended social media marketing world in 2019 for the first time so flew across to the states and attended so many of my friends in this you know online digital marketing world um, were there so it was a great chance to kind of meet people in person that you're kind of virtually connected to right um, so I attended and I, you know, I, I met at that conference as, as you do, Mike Stelzner, who's a, uh, you know, head of social media examiner and puts the conference on, took a little selfie with him, uh, you know, cause you've got to remember that moment. Right. Um, and then, you know, later that year in 2019, I, they were, uh, social media examiner were promoting a YouTube conference or a video st- a video summit. I can't remember what it was called. It was like a virtual um, video based summit. And I have, I host um, a video marketing podcast. So I kind of use that as an opportunity to say, hey, maybe I can get someone from Social Media Examiner on my podcast to kind of promote and cross promote this upcoming video marketing summit that they were doing. So I reached out Instagram direct video message to Mike Stelzner and and kind of introduced myself to him and, and said, hey, you know, can I support the summit some way in the pod uh, on my podcast? And you know, Mike re- replied to me and said, well, 
we don't really have the experts here at Social Media Examiner, our kind of, you know, our speakers at our summit are the video experts. So, you know, won't come on your podcast, <laughs> but he said, hey, but I'll, I'll have a listen to your podcast. And so, and obviously he did listen to it because the next day he replied to me and said, I had to listen to your podcast. It's great. Actually, I will come on your podcast himself. So Mike um, came on the podcast because at the time, Social Media Examiner were just starting like kind of a, a stronger push into YouTube. So I don't know if you've been following that company for a while, you'd know that they weren't really doing much on YouTube. Um, but they, you know, a few years back, back in 2019, late 2019, they they started a solid push into to YouTube content. Um, so he came on my show and, and shared a whole bunch about what the social media examiner video strategy was going to be moving forward. Then, yeah, from there, basically, he then asked a bit more about what I do and then invited me on his podcast. So I, back in 2019, was on the social media examiner podcast. And then after that, he said, come and speak at my conference. And, and that was it. So yeah, I spoke there in 2020. It was great. No one was shaking hands. Everyone was fist pumping and, um, you know, and yeah, using hand sanitizer. And then all, all of a sudden we flew home and locked ourselves in our homes for a few years. And um, that's right. You guys, hold on a second. Well, I still use hand sanitizer because I'm lazy, you know, like I can't go back to soap. hand sanitization like, is important. Yeah. Right. But I mean, just, I don't use the soap bar or little pump it bottle. Cause it's like, why go back to like, Washing well, whoever washed their head for the like sufficient amount of seconds anyway, right? Like forty five seconds. What is it like? I was told. Oh, I remember. It's like "Happy Birthday to You," the song "Happy Birthday" twice. Yep. Okay. Cool. We got it. But ain't nobody doing. Do you remember so. App Apple Watches? Like introduced. It, I don't know if you wear an Apple Watch, but introduced this kind of recognition that you're washing your hands at the time, and then and then it like it would kind of tell you that you've washed your hands for long enough. I turned that off as soon as I could. Okay, so here's the story. And then and then we need to hear more about like kind of in detail. I'm gonna ask some stuff that went down with you. I'm chuckling because I'm surprised as much as China can like throw its weight around, I'm surprised that they didn't get everyone who had like say an Apple Watch or another smartwatch and say and set up something where like if you washed your hands effectively enough, then the data went through and gave you like some sort of code that showed that you were um, you know, doing personal hygiene because, because, so you know that I got stuck outside of China, right? Uh, yeah, I've heard your story, yeah. I was thinking one of the reasons that I didn't initially return after like right when the pandemic started was because the lockdown there was just super, super intense. Like one person per family could leave a week, like their house and but I was telling another lady, do you know how they tracked and why they were initially like, actually all the way until they decided to let the pandemic run rampant, like they pretty much squashed it. You know how they did that? No, no, I don't think so. Color coded QR codes on people's cell phones. So they have this app called um, WeChat and WeChat, you heard of it? Yeah, yeah, big in China. We'll get back to the episode in a moment. Do you need Facebook ads help? But maybe Facebook ad management is not right for your business at the moment, which is fine, but you would like my eyeballs on your ad campaign. I have a new offer. The people who've signed up for it so far are loving it. It's called Facebook ad setup to success. In the next 30 days, you can work with me over 30 days. We will together set up your ad campaigns and get them running successfully the right way, the exact way that I do for my clients. That means you get three calls with me over the period of 30 days. And in between each of those calls, you get unlimited access to me like Voxer, Slack. That means I'll show you how to set up the ad campaign, all the things you should consider. We'll also go in and look at your funnel and I'll make recommendations to improve your funnel. And then in between each call, you get coaching from me still because you can record your screen, send me a message, say, hey, Quajo, what about this? Like, what would you do here in this ad, you know? And I'll respond to you that very same day. It's unlimited support from me and three calls from me. It's called Facebook Ad Setup to Success. And if you want my help one-on-one, -on -one 
one-on-one coaching to run your ads, then click on the link in the description below or go to, you can see it on the bottom of the screen, theartofonlinebusiness.com forward slash call. Theartofonlinebusiness.com forward slash call. And I'm happy to help you successfully learn to run your own Facebook ads. Yeah, sure. All right. So it's like a super app, right? Combine your Facebook, your Instagram. For the person, for the listener who doesn't know, combine combine your Venmo, your PayPal, all payment platforms, um, or most of them in the States and Australia and wherever else you're listening from with Instagram and Facebook and even like uh, eBay and wherever else you do your purchasing, Amazon.com. Combine that into a super app and then like 95% of the people in China have this app, right? And so it's everywhere. And so what they did is... They gave you red, yellow, green. Red, you've had, you know, COVID in the past uh, 14 days. Hey, can saying, you're the video specialist. Can saying that word still, like, uh, get the reach of your video lowered because social media? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. No, oh, okay, I don't think cool. Because, so. like, before, you know, I would just put up, like, um, I wouldn't say it, and I would put up on my old videos, like, a picture of Voldemort, you know, um, from Harry Potter and kind of bleep the word out. Anyway, now we can say the word all the time. So uh, what they would do then, yeah, they got these QR co- uh, codes. If you had it within the past 14 days and you were red, and if you, there was something for yellow and there was something for green. So they tracked everyone because they got access to your data. So imagine if you're living in at home in your development, you know, your community, and somebody near enough to you, let's say like, 16 houses down for a random number gets it then like everyone else's codes go red and in order to like go anywhere do anything you have to first go to like the local clinic and line up with your red qr code because they know where you're at physically um and take get one of those q-tips swabbed super high tickling your brain and then if it's negative then you get a green code and you can merrily go about your life right and so um i didn't want to go back to that. That's intense. It's quite intense. The tracking is out of control. You could drive by a market or a place. Like imagine if you were doing your regular. Just because you're in the vicinity. Uh huh. Yep. But they can track you back in time. So like, let's say you went on a Monday to get groceries, and now it's like Thursday, but somebody was diagnosed with COVID back on that Monday. They just like go back in time in their systems. And everyone who passed within a certain radius of that point, when that person got it, you know, then their QR codes go red too. So all of a sudden you're like four days later and your QR code on your phone goes red. Now you can't be mobile. You still have to go get your nose swab. Like they're really good at doing that kind of stuff. Anyway, so that was a tangent. What happened to you during the pandemic after we met inside the program? Like, Give us a snapshot of like what your business was doing then. So I've for, for many years have had two businesses that I'm kind of working on side by side. And, you know, in fact, I think one of the early coaching conversations we had with you, Kwejo, was, um, was kind of simplifying some of that stuff, right? Because um, at the time, I think, uh, you know, we're talking 2020 here. Uh, so during the, that kind of, pandemic year, I guess, uh, was when I think we, we first met. And um, I had uh, I had my agency. So I've been building my video marketing, video production company for 15 years um, here. So, you know, I've been doing that, like uh, creating video content for, for brands and businesses, you know, around Australia for, for many years. Um, and built a team here, you know, physical offices and that sort of thing. Um, so I've been doing that for, for many years. That And that's my bread and butter. You know, that's what pays the bills. Uh, that's what, you know, take home salary and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I, about seven or eight years ago, I started this engaged video marketing side of my personal brand journey, right, which um, started with the podcast as a way of just sharing and talking about video strategy and then uh, released a a course, which at the time was called Online Video Strategy Blueprint course. Um, And this was teaching video strategy to primarily to video producers. So my target market was other video producers, people who can can go out and make video at a high quality um, for their clients, but they're not talking about the strategy side of things with their clients, right? Um, so, you know, that's kind of 
was going well, uh, well enough. It was kind of open close launch um, model uh, where I launched to, depending on the year, three times a year. Okay, what was that price point randomly? But a price point, it, it started out around uh, seven hundred US dollars. I think it was like six ninety seven, um, and then it got up to uh, nine ninety seven. I think in in its latest um, iteration. And at the time I was kind of open, closed launching. Um, so it was, it was going well enough. And I was trying to, you know, the reason why I'd, I joined Rick's program at the time was to really optimize that, right? That was the whole point, right? Um, just get better at that whole approach of, of doing and I tried a few different launch models and things like that. But then in 2020, off the back of my first speaking uh, at Social Media Marketing World, um, I launched a, a membership as well. So, you know, add, add another thing to the mix, right? Um, and that did not go very well. Uh, so, you know, I, I had about 10 members um, at, at its peak. And I think I, I just didn't really have a clear vision for what it was going to be um, or, or what it should be. And the, the members that I had were good and they were engaged, but I didn't, I just wasn't able to crack the code of getting more people enrolled in that. Um, and to be honest, I had so much going on and it was the pandemic year as we're talking about that I didn't really get a clear plan in place for it. So I ended up actually closing that membership after 12 months um, and that was one of the simplification kind of pieces of advice that you shared with me at the time. And it was such a weight off my shoulders actually to close that because it, it, it was a low value membership. It was like... Um, I think it was forty dollars a month or thirty nine, thirty seven um, a month, and for ten members, that's not a lot of income, right? So it's like you know four hundred four hundred bucks or something for uh, you know kind of getting on monthly calls and you know adding new content to the membership and it, it yeah. So it was such a weight off my shoulders to to let that go, and that allowed me to then focus on doubling down and clarifying my message for. Um, for my main course, right? Um, so I ended up, you know, over the course of the next 12 months, I think we're talking 2021 there, just refining the course, re-recording um, and relaunching as the video strategist's masterclass. So it kind of rebranded the course. Um, and, you know, I still continue to sell that. It's now an evergreen model um, at a lower price point. So it's back to six six ninety seven as an evergreen model. Um, but, you know, I still haven't really nailed the the funnel for that. So, you know, maybe well, need to have a chat with you more about right? that. But, um, <laughs> you're, that. but right, you you're the funnel, funnel, you're the funnel guy, right? I, I, so, am what, the, I am the funnel guy, though. I am also going through a period of rebranding where I used to, so I primarily do ads management. And then for a number of clients, it's ads management and funnel fixing together. But, you know, after just like looking at my business, at like my time, at like what I really wanted to do with the business, I decided I'm just going to serve clients one way, managing ads. And rather than putting funnel fixing and ads together, I'll just separate that and do like strategy calls separately. If somebody wants to hire me for a couple of hours to look at their funnel, then they can. And um, that was that was kind of my, I don't know if you call it a pivot, because I feel like pivot kind of hide something that wasn't working but it was working i just decided to change it so you did set up your course on evergreen it is selling so it's working yeah yeah it's working well enough um you know i don't make a lot of sales you know it varies between a few sales a month to you know when i do a bit more of a push um you can go to a bit a bit more than that but i think the other side to my story is um it's typical entrepreneurial kind of um, you know, lack of focus sometimes, right? Uh, but, okay, uh, you got ideas. Right. But no, I mean, it's not – for me, it, the last couple of years, particularly coming out of the pandemic, right, we kind of started this conversation talking about the pandemic, but um, coming out of the pandemic and getting back into business as usual, in inverted commas, right, um, I, I I made a conscious decision to, to – double down and focus on my my agency so my my goal here is you know to do a, the, the right things in my agency over the next number of years to 
free up more time for me to do the things that I want to do in the online space. So, you know, although I'll keep the engaged video marketing brand going, um, you know, invested in new website and, you know, new copywriting and all of that last year. So, you know, it, continuing to focus on that, but I feel from a, from a business perspective, if I can do the right things in my agency, get the right people in place here, which is starting to work now, right? So I've got the team and the processes and things where, you know, I can, and for the first time last year, went, um, went away for two weeks in this business and didn't have to touch anything, right? Um, and, the, and the business kept going. And that's the first time in 15 years for me of being able to, you know, actually step away from my business, but the team kept going, like, you know, physical team in an office here in Australia. So I feel if I can do a few more things to move me a bit further out of that, um, particularly out of the business development and sales, which is my kind of main role in the agency, then I think I'll, I'll set myself up in a, in a good way. So, yeah, that's why, I've, yeah, when you've got split focus, you can only kind of put a certain amount of time in certain things, right? So that's, that's the lesson that I've been learning. I understand. I've definitely gone through large periods of my life pursuing multiple things. I feel like that's a popular, like people are like, yeah, you want to have like multiple irons in the fire, you know, see what works out. But it's like, if you focus on one though, it's more likely to work out way better than testing a bunch of different things first. Um, where do you travel to when you take a vacation for two weeks in Queensland? That's a state in Australia and the capital is Brisbane, right? That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey, well done. Geography for the win. <laughs> so where do I travel to? So at this particular case, we traveled to Fiji. So it was, you know, not in Australia. So we took a, took a family trip to Fiji. The kingdom of, <gasps> I am so sorry. Hold on. We're just going to keep this on the podcast, but I need to let my Uber Eats driver in. Bueno, que le pase por favor. Gracias. Which allows me on the podcast to remind listeners that I do live in Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking some fluent Mexican as well. Some fluent Uber Eats Spanish, I guess. Like, yeah, that's the problem. Is I don't really get out because I'm just here behind my computer screens. Well, now I'm worried that you've got your Uber Eats sitting there and, and we can't eat during the podcast. Or is this one of those podcasts where you're just chowing down? No, 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 no. no. I w you know, maybe I could do that. Just build that into the brand so I could just eat food and have a podcast. It's it's a popular niche of online video, actually. Uh, not in, not that I watch it, but you know, of people eating on camera. Apparently, that's a thing. Like the ASMR stuff, like with the super. Well, nice it's like ASMR, like, well, I guess. But it. it's, well, yeah. yeah. Well. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't do that because my mom taught me to eat with my mouth closed. Not that I always do that, but I feel like podcast episode would be just a slap in her face if I was eating there, and if she saw it, she might like fly down here and set me straight. So. Um, yeah, no, let's not do that. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not like a meal. It's um, just groceries. Ah, uh, gotcha. Nanny will get them and bring them in and chop up. I basically I eat like a rabbit. So like every day, it's like the same, like quinoa and various colors of bell peppers and broccoli and chicken and beef and salmon and this sort of thing. And so she just preps everything and puts it in Tupperwares and then. I kind of chow away. That's pretty good. So you were going to tell me about vacation. Like where does one vacation from where you're located at? You said to the kingdom of Fiji. Yeah, well, we went to Fiji. We're going back to Fiji this year, actually, because it was so good. Oh, last really? Year. Like yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So we've got a couple of, um, we got a couple of kids. So the kids are 10 and 12. And um, the, the good thing about Fiji, I don't know if you've been, Kwejo, but, you know, when you go to the right sort of resorts they have great kids clubs right so the fijian people just love kids and you know the kids clubs are super fun like the kids want to go to the kids club um, <laughs> and the parents you know, are complaining and the parents ain't complaining right so but the kids club cutoff is 12 years old so after 12 then you're not really supposed to you're not going to the kids club anymore so our eldest daughter is now 12 years old this year um so you know and she will be 12 when we go back to fiji later in the year. Um, so it's kind of our last chance to have, have the kids off to kids club. So we're going to, we're going to make the most of that. What's your plan? Like after she can't go to the kids club, then 
just got to hang around with us or you know i i guess you know i haven't got a teenager yet she's 12 now right but i guess when they're a teenager they just say that mum and dad are boring too right and so they go off and do what they do um if we go to places like that but could be the good thing and the bad thing about being at a resort with a teenager but hey you know yeah uh, she's a good kid though so yeah so i mean yeah there's that but yeah i mean look queensland where i live in australia is like you know the t tourism one of the tourism capitals of um of australia so there's you know the beaches and there's so many places to go locally and that's typically what we do we don't typically go to overseas holidays as a family um you know we typically stay more local uh so yeah it's uh it's good love living here i'm like what was that show this is completely random, but is it hearsay? No, there was some show that was talking about how like spiders are your friends and you shouldn't kill them and stuff. And they couldn't air the episode of the show in Australia because like there, there's like actually tons of very scary spiders. Have, have, have you heard this? I haven't. I mean, I, I know that I live in Australia that there is, you know, we've got the dangerous spiders and snakes and you know everything's poisonous and out to kill you here in australia um but i haven't heard that specifically about not being able to air a show because of that but it makes sense was it i'm like was it dora the explorer was it pepper pig oh so it was like a kid's show that was saying you know go and cuddle a spider yeah you know that propaganda that says don't kill spiders you know if, if... Now, now somebody's listening and getting offended, but that's okay because this is a get to know V. I have one of those electric rackets. It's about the size of the paddle board, you know, but it has mesh on it and um, you use it to kill things. Cause I live in the desert, basically uh, cacti and spiders and lizards and scorpions. And so we get those creatures and I kill those creatures um, happily. So, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, look in Australia, they're just everywhere. I mean, I don't really go out to kill them. We catch them and let them go outside if they're inside the house. Okay, there we go. So it's like we're the yin and the yang as far as animals or critters go. Well, my, my daughters will get upset with me if I, if I squashed a spider. Well, you don't tell them. Sometimes I'm happy to squash a spider. <laughs> Depends. Some, some spiders are cute though, right? You don't want to kill them. But some are just like a pest. I don't know. I'm going to say that I don't believe there's any cute spiders <laughs> Okay. Um, but maybe I haven't seen enough of a variety of spiders too. Yeah, they're not cute. Oh my gosh. So you're an expert at teaching people how to use online, like online video or video in general. Is there any video that's not online these days, but to increase their business sales? Anything you want to add to that? Well, it's actually what you just mentioned there. When I first launched my course, I called it the online video strategy blueprint. And for years I referred to it as online video, right? Um, but the last couple of years, I'm like, why am I even saying online video? <laughs> of course it's online video, right? Exactly that. So, you know, as I transitioned to naming the course of Video Strategist Masterclass, I've also moved away from, you know, very deliberately away from just referring to it as online video because every, every bit of video content is online somewhere. 